Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, I made a post on my community page and I asked if there was any topic or anything you wanted me to speak about. And I did receive a few comments and I'm excited. I took four of the topics that were given and God told me to move with those topics. So thank you so much if you did respond. If you did put something up there, I do greatly appreciate that. And I wanted to get right on that as soon as possible. And I did want to do a little FYI. So if I ever post and say, hey guys, how can I best serve you? You know, what type of videos would you like? Or what would you like me to talk about? Please know God put it on my heart to do that. So I do appreciate every comment, but I'm literally asking the question because God told me to. I'm not aimlessly looking for direction and just grabbing things out of the sky. God told me clearly when I made the post, he said, hey, there's some people that I need you to make some messages for, and they're going to tell you what they are. Just ask the question. So that's what that is. So I do appreciate everyone who responds. I genuinely do. I just feel like sometimes I do get attacked by some people, not everyone, but it's do what, what God calls you to do. Be yourself. It's like, what are you talking about? I'm being myself. The whole point of the question is God is leading me to ask it. So he's already in the equation. I'm not struggling for ideas. I'm not trying to make things up. It's just that I'm here in service. You know, so even pay attention to how I word the questions. It's about serving. I have to serve someone with whatever it is God is using me to share. So I just wanted to be clear about that because I do get attacked when I ask those questions sometimes and it really behooves me. And I just don't understand why a person just automatically assumes that you don't have any ideas or, you know, you're lost and I don't know how to ask God which direction to go into. I don't know. I think I just think that's a little odd sometimes, but I also know too that when you are called to put out content, most people are genuinely there in support and I know people don't mean any harm. But I did feel led to say it because the last few times I did it, I didn't say anything, but this day I said, "No, I'm going to address it because it it keeps coming up in a way where it's as if, you know, I'm just randomly trying to ask y'all questions and it truly is from service. So again, thank you guys kindly. I hope I didn't say that in a way that offended anybody, but I do think it's important that when a person is on the other side, trying to walk and trying to move in a way that God intended, I think it's important that we take care not to attack and come at people from a, from a perspective that is not necessarily warranted. So I'm trying to do better with that. I want to try to set a safe space for people to be able to do that where I'm at over here as well. So that's what that was about. So as you saw in the title, I did mention I was going to talk about that. So now I want to get to the first thing that I want to address based on what you guys wanted to talk about. This is something that as soon as I read it, the Holy Spirit told me to do this one first. Okay. The question was, how do you get back from disappointments, even though you are convinced that God told you to do whatever that thing was, right? This right here, I knew once I saw that, I said, okay, thank you, Holy Spirit, because I knew right then the Lord was genuinely speaking to me. And I heard clearly that I was equipped already. I was already equipped with an answer for this. So I know that's why the Lord made this person post this because I can, I can be of great service in this area to you. So I want to, I want to say a couple of things. Let me give you some context. So first of all, Rule of thumb number one, just because God tells you to do something and he puts his stamp of approval on it for you, it does not mean that it is going to be marvelous. It does not mean that it is going to be fantastic. It does not mean that it is always going to be awesome. Okay, let's, let me use as a reference, let's go back to when Mary found out she was pregnant. Let's just reference that story, okay? It was one thing to find out that she was pregnant and she said, okay, well, because there was an angel and there was God. One came to uh, Joseph and one came to her. I, I don't want to confuse and say which one. You can look it up uh, to be more specific. But the point was God absolutely conveyed a message there, which confirmed the birth of Jesus, right? 
Here's the thing. Nowhere in that conversation did you hear God say, but guess what? You're not going to have nowhere to have a baby. Y'all going to be walking all night. You're going to end up having that baby in the manger. Joseph not going to want to be bothered with you. But God told her to do it. And what did she say? She said, be it unto me. Be it unto me according to thy word. So whoever needs to hear this, the first thing you need to understand is just because God gives you a directive, it does not mean, it absolutely does not mean that everything is going to be a bed of roses. Everything is going to be perfect and just lining up. No, what it will be though is purposeful. And what you will see is the manifestation of something incredible at the end. Yo, the end of a thing. When you get to the end of a thing, when you get to that part where you can look back in retrospect and say, you know what? It was all worth the pain. It was all worth the tears. It was all worth all of the things that I had to go through because guess what? Had I not done this, had I not gone through the leading of the Holy Spirit, had I not listened to God directly when he spoke to me to go do X, Y, and Z, maybe this would not have happened. Okay? So that's the first thing. The second thing is, when you talk about getting back from a disappointment, even though you are sure that it's what God told you to do, let's think about that disappointment. Let's just really think about the disappointment. One thing that I have learned on my journey in my life is that some of the greatest disappointments set me up for miracles, sets me up, set me up for blessings. Cause let me tell you something that happens that I, I notice that God does sometimes with disappointments. God will allow someone to disappoint you just so he can prepare someone else to bless you. God will allow you to be disappointed just so he can allow someone else to bless you. And you're like, okay, well, Robin, that doesn't make any sense. Why would he do that? I don't know why he would do it. I don't even think the why is important. But what I do think is important is we have to go back and ask ourselves this. Were we, were we really genuine in hearing what God said for us to do, even though it blew up in our faces? Are we angry? Are we mad? Or did we just assume because God said, hey, I want you to do X, Y, and Z, that everything was going to be great because God had a seal, seal of approval on it. There is, there is nothing, there is nothing that promises to us that we will have a perfect life at all times in the word of God. And remember, God exalts his word higher than his name. Okay. There is nothing in the word of God that says that we will have this uh, tribulation free, error free, trial free situation, and everything is just going to be perfect. There is none of that. Think about the 12 disciples. Think about all of the directives and all of the things that he told them to do. And they went crazy. They started acting like they didn't know him supposed to be his best friend. They backstabbing him. They lying on him. The dude sitting adjacent from him to set him up to be killed. Like these are the things you have to think about because there were things that, that, that even Jesus said when he walked this earth, to confirm to them, hey, this is what I need you to do. Many of them, when you look at how the disciples died after being obedient to the directives from Jesus, from what God said, from when the Holy Spirit came, when you start looking at all of those things, you will see that it was a mixture of things. There was happiness, there was joy, there was sadness, there were ups, there were downs, but everything was to get to the heart of God. It was to get to the heart of the matter and how the people can become closer to the most high. That is what it's all about. So to the person who's struggling with the disappointment connected to the God thing, I would just, I would just ask you sincerely, to disconnect yourself from the disappointment and reconnect yourself to the fact that God told you to do what you did. And perhaps giving yourself a little time, maybe you need to heal, maybe you need to maybe you need to have a look in the mirror and say, "Okay, Lord, show me myself." Right? Show me who I really am. Show me what I'm thinking cuz you know, there's nothing that's saying you can't feel disappointed. That's, that's okay if you feel disappointed by being obedient. But how many of you know? You know, I'm going to tell you, if you don't know, now you know, honey. Obedience? Ooh, ooh, ooh. The price tag for obedience is a fool, baby. 
Let me tell you something. Because I'm going to tell you, when it comes to obedience, it's going to either be you be disobedient and you're going to write a check that you can't cash. Or you are going to be obedient and you are going to feel played because you're like, so I had to be obedient and it still blew up in my face. I still got played like this because at the end of the day and everything that we do, it is to give God glory. And sometimes he will set us up to do something and it will land us in a place in time. It will land us in a season when we are literally thinking, oh my God, why is this happening to me? I did exactly what you said. You told me to move here. And this is what happened. You told me this was going to be ready for me. It wasn't ready for me. Now I look like a fool. How many of you all can relate? I thought that this was, this just confirmed what I said in the beginning, y'all. When the Lord put on my heart to go into those comments and say, hey, what do you guys want to talk about? It made so much sense because he knew I recently had first hand experience with this. And I just want you, whoever is listening, whoever needed this message, I want you to genuinely, and I'm not just saying this as a post or just, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm serious. Really be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged from this message. Because the third thing I want to say that'll wrap up the whole point of what we're trying to understand about this is that the disappointment is a precursor to the actual blessing. Let me say it again. The disappointment is a precursor to the actual blessing. So yes, just because God told you to do something, it it just doesn't mean that everything is going to be perfect. That's just not what it means. And what we do in our mortal bodies and our human flesh, we just automatically assume, well, God did it. You know, he, this is what it is. And this is that. And there's just no promise of that. You know what I'm saying? There's just no promise of that. That is us and our assumptions. And honestly, sometimes we listen to other people. Sometimes we get so desperate, we look for answers and then we take on other people's opinion of what God told us. And then it blows up in our faces because God did not want you to bring the get along gang. He just wanted it to be you and him. And he wanted y'all to figure it out because y'all, a lot of times when, let me just say this, the bonus of God setting you up for something and telling you to do something or to participate in something, the bonus of doing that sometimes, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you something that happened to me one time. I'm going to be pretty vague, but the gist of it was I felt like God was leading me to do something and I did it. But then when I did it, it absolutely blew up in my face. I was super embarrassed, right? Like very embarrassed. And there were other players involved. There were other people involved, right? But check this out. Had that situation not happened, I would not have known the true intent of people that I thought really had my back. They absolutely, not only did they not have my back, y'all, they didn't even really care about me at all. Completely had all of the bells and whistles, faking the funk. Oh yeah, I heard this. Let me tell you something. I may not have liked that I did what God told me to do. But baby, when it was all said and done, when I got past my flesh and my pride and my personal embarrassment, I was crying tears of joy in that disappointment. That disappoint me, excuse me, that disappointment took me out of a place where I had scales on my eyes and I didn't even know. Let me tell you, sometimes even in your disappointment, your disappointment is cloaked and God giving you revelation on things that you would have never found out had that situation not happened. So this is always, this is what I say. Cause I, who am I to tell you God ain't tell you something? I can't tell you that. It doesn't matter what I think. It doesn't matter what I believe. I can have questions. People do it to me all the time. <laughs> so it's what it is, right? It's what it is. But I tell you what, You know what your God tells you. I know what mine tell me. (laughs) So it's, 
And that takes practice. And guess what? I believe until the day I leave this earth, it is always going to be a work in progress. It is always going to be something where I'm working on it. I'm not perfect at it. Sometimes I miss, sometimes I don't. And it all goes to the person who believes and trusts the God in me. And they understand that I'm human too. You could either take that or leave that. And that's something you may have to come to terms with also, especially in your hearing God. But I hope that this has set you free and let you know that just because there's some disappointment connected to the thing that God told you to do, it is biblical. There are tons of instructions and things that God has given to people in the word. And it was connected to things that had disappointment written all over it. And in the end, it was always some tremendous miracle, always some tremendous blessing. It was also always something in incredible. In fact, I'm going to do one more just so you know. The Shulamite woman. The Shulamite woman, she was the one, her and her husband, she built, she built like an extra room for the prophet to come and stay with her. Prophet came to her and was like, look, you know, because you blessed me, I'm going to bless you. She wanted a baby. He said, boom, I'll give you a baby. She got the baby a year later. Well, guess what? One day she got up and I think the baby was limp, like, the, you know, the baby had passed. And she was like, oh my gosh, she ran, she took the baby, ran, she found him. And she's like, look, I thought you said this, this, this was my baby. Well, needless to say, the baby came back, but nobody knew all of that was going to happen. She was just being obedient, preparing a place. But there, there was nothing in that conversation when when, when she told the prophet, hey, I got a place for you to live. It's just for you. You know, I'm a cheerful giver. I don't want no money. I don't want no rent. I don't want no mortgage. I just want you to stay here. And, and she was full of joy to do it. She didn't hang it over his head. She showed loving kindness. And I don't think, too, this is a sidebar. This is kind of coming in while I'm talking. Always remember something. When you bless a prophet, you get a prophet's reward. I know that's a bit off topic, but I felt the Holy Spirit talking me to say that. And any of y'all who are out here blessing prophets, you got a huge reward connected to that. Those of you who are genuinely being kind, opening doors for them, opportunities, showing them love, kindness, that is biblical. And you can look, take your time, look that up and look up all of that information surrounding even that story. But I'm saying all that to say to you, oh, and even with a prophet, that's another thing. Even with prophets, it tells you prophets are not even respected in their own hometown. So how many times a prophet is giving a word to someone that he loves and cares about or somebody in his hometown, her home city, whatever, and they completely disappoint them. They completely disrespect them or treat them like they false or they're not listening. So I think it, there are many times in the word of God where you can go and find those examples for yourself and you can understand even on a biblical, biblical level, not even just from me speaking on it, but you can find out personal examples in the word of God that explains to you that oftentimes when God gives us a directive, it's connected to some type of disappointment. And from that disappointment, we usually see a blessing, a miracle, a sign, a wonder, and sometimes all of them. And that disappointment could be filled with revelation. It could be filled with blessings, filled with miracles, filled with things that you would have never known had you not been obedient with the original directive that God had given you. So how you get back up from that disappointment is that you start to look at what God told you to do with new eyes. And what you're going to see is when you start to understand that there's a bigger thing going on and you stop wrestling in your disappointment and looking at how things have turned out bad and all of these things, you want to know what's going to happen? you're going to start to see that thing hit the upswing. You're going to start to see things change. And I'm a living witness. This has happened to me countless times in my life. I have lost count of how many times God has told me to do something and it has blown up in my face because I'll tell you something else too. It's a trigger effect. It's like it'll trigger one thing and then this will happen and this happen and this happen. And it's basically, no, it's a domino effect is what I meant to say. It's a domino effect. And then you get one revelation and another revelation, another revelation, and then God starts changing you. Then another person who's involved and they start changing because I like, wait, maybe this, maybe I got to look at myself and then boom, then somebody connected to them. It's like, oh, well they changing. Well, wait a minute. Let me see what I'm doing. So you see what I'm saying? It's like your obedience. It's the game changer. Your, your obedience is the game changer. So just keep that in mind moving forward. 
I do want you to be encouraged. I do want you to understand that you're, the disappointment you're currently facing, it is much bigger. It is much bigger than what it is that God is trying to ultimately show you. And I want you to know and understand that despite what it may feel like, despite what it may look like, if you know you heard God, remember this, if it's not all right, it is not the end. So do not get stuck in your disappointment, my friend, because when it's all said and done, you will have that peace that surpasses all understanding. You will be able to say, oh my God, I totally understand what this was. If I would have got stuck in that disappointment, feel like, feel like, well, I could have swore God told me to do this. Why did this happen like this? Why would he tell me to go do this and it blew up in my face? Why would he tell me to do this and it's not working? All of that stuff, you're going to get to a point in your life where you understand, God, this is the best thing you could have done. And I'm so glad I was obedient to what it is that you told me to do. So guys, I got a few more of these coming. I hope that they blessed you. And I hope that if you have any more topics or anything you want to discuss like this, please let me know. But remember, you can go to my website, I'mWiredToInspire.com. You can get more information from me and also check all of my playlists. Guys, I think about a month ago, I did a play, playlist of 10 prophetic messages that God had given me in one night, and I just kept recording them in one setting. So if you haven't seen those, definitely go to my playlist and check those out. It was very random, but hopefully it'll be very helpful to some of you. And um, that's it. So stay tuned for the next one. I am Wired to Inspire, and I hope you are too. God bless.